Instagram, I was sent this post from Grow Your Greens, which is John Kohler's Instagram page. And it is this uh, hotel cart thing full of his travel luggage. And I think this right here is just his only actual luggage. And then all the rest, what the heck does that say? I don't know. I have no idea. But I think all this is all food that he's traveling with. That is crazy. But let's see what he wrote. He wrote, how I travel. This is how I stay committed to my raw, nutrient-dense, plant-exclusive diet, even when I'm on the road. This is why I go through all this trouble when traveling. Well, he's going to list the reasons why he's going through all this. And at least he's admitting he's going through trouble. Because look at this. This is crazy. Very inconvenient and absurd. One, kitchen on the go. I travel with a cutting board, knives, juicer, juicer, blender, steamer, mini fridge. He's bringing juicer, blender, steamer, and mini fridge with him. These companions come with me wherever I roam. They make sure I can whip up my favorite nutrient-packed meals right in my hotel room. Nothing beats the taste of a freshly made meal that is healthier and less expensive than eating out. Mm. My mini fridge that plugs into the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, nothing is... <laughs> Nothing beats the taste of freshly made meal that is healthier and less expensive than eating out. And you talk about you having your mini fridge, you plug in your car. Yeah, that definitely sounds less expensive than just going and getting something from a restaurant or a room service. But anyway, um, hotel keeps. Sorry, I got a notification. Hotel keeps uh, all my fresh fruits and veggies. And prepared meals are always at arm's reach. It allows me to eat fresh food when traveling. When most people only eat shelf-stable food that is not as healthy as freshly made food. Juicing is my secret weapon. It's a quick way to maximize blah, 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 the vibrancy of fruit juice. What does that mean? How can juice be vibrant? I have no idea. Um, unless it has like a vibrant color, but it's, it's just an inanimate object. It's liquid in a cup. Anyway, steaming veggies in my hotel room is like a culinary adventure. It's an adventure to, to steam vegetables, and he probably doesn't season them or spice them or do anything with them. So how is that an, an adventure? It's a culinary adventure. When I think culinary adventure, I think people are really like putting things together, making recipes, you know, trying something different. But you're steaming vegetables in a hotel room. And that's like adventurous to you. Okay. It retains the natural flavors and nutrients. Okay. Whatever. Performance and recovery. Eating healthily during travel has been a game changer for my performance and recovery. When he says that, you would expect... He's like some athletic or super fit person, but I, I, is that John Kohler? I don't know. We'll look at his page and see if he's showing off those results because there's vegans I heard talking about stuff that they're not demonstrating. So I might do a video about Fully Raw Christina's latest video about um, burnout and stuff. And why are you offering tips when she looks completely exhausted in that video? I'll make a video about that next, maybe. <laughs> a diet rich in nutrient dense plant exclusive foods fuels my body with the essential nutrients it needs. I find myself with more energy to explore new places, tackle my workouts, and recover faster from long journeys. Okay. Beyond travel, adopting a nutrient dense plant exclusive diet has transformed my life in countless ways. Why does he use the word vegan? I don't know. I've experienced clearer skin, improved digestion. And a stronger immune system. Plus it's kind to our planet. You know why he doesn't want to say vegan? Maybe because he had that goat's milk on that yacht he was talking about. Because <laughs> he get, didn't feel like plugging in his uh, his juicer on the yacht. I don't know. And plug in your refrigerator on the yacht. Or your steamer. And throw some broccoli in there. Why you want goat milk? Plus it's kind It's kind to our planet. Really? You think, you think this is kind to your planet? Okay. Anyway, I mean, whatever you say, I want to see what people have to say about this. Legitimate question is and something I've been reflecting on as I'm considering raw plant-based diet in the long term. I've planted over 100 varieties of food bearing trees and the math is still not adding up. My question is, if it were not for imports and unseasonal available, they planted over 100 varieties of fruit bearing trees. Hmm. How long do you think you'd be able to continue this raw diet if you were to consume locally and only what's in season well you would not be able to survive unless you are part gorilla or part chimp where you can live off of leaves and vegetation and maybe part cows so you can live off of grasses and other forms of vegetation and hay when things are not in season i don't know uh there's no way to do this there's no way to do this year round 
And if you're a human, you gotta have a freezer at least. Ideally, in a food forest system, food forest system, you want at least one tree crop ready each month with other cultivars overlapping so you get year-round harvest. Okay, where where is this place where things are growing year-round? Like within a local area. I don't know. Where is a local area where you have stuff growing year-round? Now, there's stuff growing year-round, but in certain stretches of time, you're probably going to only have like okra and <laughs> potatoes. Uh, but yeah, but this person said they want to be raw, so... What the heck? Coupled with various vegetables, staggered plantings, and preservation. Yeah, preservation, like a freezer and a refrigerator. You know? You can freeze probably a lot of fruit, uh, but you would have to have so many trees. And other cultivars overlapping, but is there going to be enough of each thing for everybody for the entire year? I don't know. I don't know. How is there enough space for that? I don't know. Yes, ideally, but from my experience here in the tropics is that there are seasons of abundance with many varieties of fruiting. But uh, then there are also seasons with just citrus, for example. I'm questioning these things as I debate a natural, localized, raw diet. Well, you better get some hens in your yard and eat some raw, crack some raw eggs into your citrus juice. People do that. The role meat may or may not play in it. Thank you for being open to this conversation. Well, I mean, they're asking good questions. They're asking good questions. And I think the person's response, like, they make it sound like, oh, just have different people growing different things and stuff like that. But we can't even feed everybody that's not even on a raw diet bananas without having to have massive banana plantation type things and monocropping. There's no way. There's no way. There's not enough space for this. They wrote, I am in the tropics too. And there are plenty of other crops that go into the dry season. Like what? Are they rich in calories? I don't know. Plus, with late cultivars, you get the overlapping, and I'm still exploring nuts and seed crops. But yes, meat and eggs may have to be introduced. Wow, at least they're honest. At least they're honest. Plant man, Dan, whoever, at least they're honest. Meat and eggs, yes. Yes, you got an animal that you can milk and some other animals that are going to lay eggs for you. You can go year-round eating your local plants. That's what humans have pretty much done. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Do you bring all of this if you fly? Yeah, I want to know. Oh, they said, no, this is by car. This is by car. It really depends on how long his trip is. I'm like, you ain't going to pay for all that to fly on a plane. And they wouldn't even let you bring all that stuff. I thought was that was uh, my hotel cart. I thought we were the only ones traveling like this. I saw Alyssa Raw Food Romance going on a trip with her partner. And they were traveling like this too. They had like whole uh, carts of food look like shopping carts and coolers and stuff just to go on a camping trip that was only probably like a couple days and they had to really pack their truck full of like these refrigerator cooler things just to make it a couple days in nature <laughs> like if you're such a raw vegan why can't you just go out there and find something to eat out in the raw vegetation you're surrounded by raw vegetation why can't you just have some of that stuff that's out there you're camping you're camping you got to bring your dehydrated corn crisps or whatever anyway you're a hardcore rock on Love to see the commitment, but surely some people, to some people, this post can make it appear that it is unattainable to be healthy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you fly instead of drive? Take the basics, cutting board, knife, and maybe only a blender or juicer. I cannot imagine traveling with a blender or juicer. But then again, I'm willing to, if I really wanted a smoothie that damn bad, I would just go to a restaurant or a store or room service and order that. But then the smoothie, it would be smaller than what a raw vegan would be expecting. Uh, but if you're not a vegan, you would get a smoothie that has like yogurt and some milk or something in it. And it's going to be satisfying you and holding you over and be like an actual, maybe not a full meal, maybe like a light breakfast. But they're blending only fruits and leaves and stuff. So they're going to be hungry. And that's why they need to bring their whole massive blender and juicer with them. Anyway. So I'm assuming that he probably doesn't really fly. Maybe he doesn't fly that often. He probably just drives everywhere. A travel-friendly juicer. He probably bought that big Nama juicer with him. All that stuff. I wonder what would happen if you ate a Big Mac. You would see how stupid all this is. <laughs> you would see how ridiculous all this is. Get an RV so you don't have to lug all this around. Well. And people are going to be looking at it like, what the heck? 
they think you probably got a fruit cart trying to sell stuff in the hotel. A vitamin and salad master. Wow. You put all your fruit in the suitcase and very few clothes. All right, so I think those were the only interesting comments. Somebody wrote, he's a wise soul. There is no wisdom in this. This is stupidity. Well, what is so wise about this? Wisdom might be uh, finding things to make your life easier instead of harder. This is making your life harder for some nutrient deficient diet. You got to bring all this and you probably only stay in a hotel two nights. <laughs> Uh, he said he drove out there so yeah I mean they have supermarkets and stores I, like why are you bringing so much food they don't have like a supermarket or something nearby maybe he got this for cheap I don't know but do you have to bring enough food to make you on the journey back I don't know it's just crazy 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 and I think that if he had a Big Mac he would feel a lot of relief that he could just travel and just bring his his suitcase and his clothes and his toiletries and just eat normal food. And I have to do all this. This is crazy. This is for one person. Can you imagine if it's... I mean, I'm assuming that it's just him. Maybe it's other people too. Or somebody else with him. But can you imagine like a family of four or five or something like that? Traveling on a vacation. Parents and two kids or something. Trying to eat this stupid diet. This is how you know that it's completely unrealistic and unsustainable. You would need three carts full of fruit. Just to make it for you and your two kids. That you're hopefully not feeding raw vegan. This is just in theory to stay in a hotel for 72 hours. You would need at least three of these full of fruit. 